another webinar uh, later on this afternoon. Uh, the PowerPoint that you do see and the guidance will be sent out to you this afternoon. Uh, both the, the webinar sessions will be recorded so you can revisit those. Um, then we'll, we'll make sure that we, we take the, the best sounding one. Uh, we did a run through uh, last week. Everything seemed to be working fine, so uh, we'll see where we go from here. Um, uh, this will not uh, take very long. Uh, this should be a little uh, less than an hour or so. Uh, just a few reminders, uh, please. Uh, please uh, mute your phones. Um, then we will take questions at the end. So please, I, I know all of you have uh, uh, some questions. Uh, hopefully this presentation will answer some of those. Uh, but if you do have any remaining questions, uh, please hold those uh, until the end. So we will go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, good morning and welcome uh, to the Shared Plan Guidance webinar. Uh, we wanted to take this opportunity to roll out the guidance as close to face-to-face uh, -face as we could rather than just uh, sending it out to all of you and waiting until the January regional meetings to discuss some more in depth. Uh, hopefully this will give you an overview of the new Shared Plan model and provide you with, as I said, with answers to some of your questions. Creating, and as uh, most of you know, uh, creating a planning process is not a new requirement for uh, councils. Uh, since the inception of Family Children First in the mid-90s, there has always been a requirement of councils to evaluate and prioritize services, fill gaps, and create uh, new strategies to achieve better results. Uh, this requirement looked different in each county at the time and was completed to levels of varying degree. Uh, there was not a prescriptive approach provided and counties developed their own informal approaches based on community resources and whatever they had available to them. In 2006, that informal process became more formalized with the passage of House Bill 289 that required councils to establish a formal process to identify priorities, monitor the progress of meeting those priorities, and develop an annual plan that identifies cross-system efforts to help increase child well-being and family well-being in the county. Uh, the results of these plans were to be reported annually uh, to our office, and that is a process that remains today. As the process of House Bill 289 required counties to become more prescriptive in their planning processes, feedback that was received over a number of years indicated that this planning work was duplicative to work already being completed by each of the Family Children First Council mandated members for their respective state departments. According to the feedback that was received, each of the council members were required to conduct a similar process and that the new planning process established in House Bill 289 seemed to add another layer to that work that was seen and viewed as duplicative. Uh, based on this feedback, Ohio Family and Children First, in partnership with The Ohio State University, transitioned the annual House Bill 289 planning process to a shared planning model that was designed to take into account the work currently happening with system partners and use that work to identify a longer-term strategic plan built upon shared priorities that were culminated from each of these system plans. So basically what we asked you to do was to look at the plans that you had available in your communities, kind of cross-reference those to see where some of the shared priorities are going to be, and then plan around those priorities. The, the shared plan process was developed and reviewed by a group of counties that provided feedback to help clarify the process and to identify local plans that could be included in the review process that each county will be conducting. That feedback informed the final version of the share plan that was then piloted by the 25 family and civic engagement counties at that time. Uh, the guidance and the affiliated training was then rolled out statewide to the County Family Children First Councils and they created their first four-year strategic plans. As the results of the developed share plans uh, were reviewed, feedback started to roll in that indicated inconsistencies with the local plans that were reviewed. Feedback of these plan inconsistencies started to be echoed across the state. 
and there was feedback provided that indicated lack of consistency in the availability of local plans and the types of plans that were available, the quality and scope of those plans, the time frame in which the plans were written, some were annual plans, other were longer term strategic plans, and some were just plans for very specific populations. And the data that was used to develop the plans and the overall usefulness of the plans included in the shared planning process. So there was a lot of inconsistencies based on what was available in your community to conduct your shared plan around. As the time frame for the current plans was ending towards the end of year, state fiscal year 2015, it was clear based on the feedback that additional modifications were going to be needed as the counties developed their new multi-year shared plans. Based on the feedback that was provided, the very results of the previous planning process and the amount of turnover as experienced locally with Family Children First coordinators and Family and Children First mandated members, it was decided that a new foundation on the shared plan model needed to be built to be able to effectively move this forward. Researching various planning processes and procedures it was discovered that the collective impact model had similar components to the Family and Children First planning process already in place, but it provided a more community-wide view on how shared priorities are identified and addressed within the individual shared plans. The collective impact model allowed for the combing of local system plans, but provides leeway for counties to identify shared priorities in a variety of ways. And as I mentioned before, the collective impact model is built upon five interconnected components that are designed to produce strong alignment among system partners to lead to large-scale community results. And on your screen, you see those five components, which include a common agenda, where all participants share a vision for change that includes a common understanding of the problem and a joint approach to solving the problem through agreed-upon actions. You have shared measurements where all participating organizations agree on the ways that success will be measured and reported. You have mutually reinforcing activities. The organizations agree to coordinate a set of differentiated activities through a mutually reinforcing plan of action. You have continuous communication where all stakeholders engage in frequent and structured open communication to build trust, assess, uh, assure mutual objectives, and receive common motivation through the creation of this communication. And finally, you have backbone support. And basically, that calls for an independent staff that is dedicated to the initiative uh, that provides ongoing, to, ongoing support by guiding the initiative's vision and strategy, you supporting the aligned activities, you establish shared measurement policies, you advance policies, and you mobilize resources. So those are the core components of collective impact, and I know a few of you uh, in the county said of doing extensive research on this. I provided a background on this at the coordinator's annual meeting back in October, and this information has been floating around. But one of the things that I want to make clear that this new shared planning process for Ohio Family and Children First is not going to be a carbon copy of the collective impact model. Rather, it'll be utilizing some of the components as foundational components of the shared plan process going forward. Just due to feasibility and the ease of trying to have your counties work through this, we've attempted to utilize as much of the current process as possible while borrowing parts of collective impact that will hopefully address the inconsistencies that came to light in the previous planning efforts. Um, now, what I want to do is to go through some of these specific components uh, that we'll be asking counties to go through to work to develop uh, the new plans. Uh, we will still uh, like counties to identify at, uh, what your current initiatives are uh, through your Family and Children First Councils. Uh, it's similar to what you're doing now. This is not meant to be an exhaustive list of county programming but only those initiatives that have direct tie to your local Family and Children First Council. We'll be asking you to conduct some sort of process to identify additional share priorities that are not currently identified in your initiatives inventory. Uh, this is currently the same as we have and we'll be keeping the process the same moving forward. Uh, 
Uh, these priorities can be issue specific. They can be infrastructure in nature and or enhancing the capacity of your local Family and Children First Council to collaborate. We will not be asking Family and Children First Councils to conduct any formal legal assessment processes or identify these priorities in any prescriptive way. Uh, we want it to be flexible for you, but we only ask that the councils identify a constructive process to identify what your shared priorities are going to be for planning. So we want to leave it as flexible as we can, but we want you to be sure that the process is going to be data informed and it should be based upon the collective knowledge of each of your members around your council tables. Chad? Y yes, Dave? Uh, can we ask a question at this point or do you want me to wait to the end? Yeah, if you could wait to the end because we okay, may be able, able to fine. answer your question, but we'll have plenty of time at the end to ask and answer okay, questions. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. Okay. Yep. Um, the next two components of the shared planning process are, are, are similar as well. Uh, the shared outcomes for this process will continue to be the same as counties will be asked to identify outcomes associated with the identified shared priority. Uh, these are the directional statements that will highlight what is to be affected within a larger shared priority, such as you want to improve a, a indicator, you want to reduce access to drugs and alcohol, you want to strengthen th this or that. So that's the, the directional approach that, that will identify what the shared outcome is going to be. Uh, counties will again be asked to identify a set of indicators that will track the process of achieving the identified shared outcome. Uh, having a small but comprehensive set of indicators establishes a common language that supports the action framework and encourages more collaborative problem solving. Now this, look, this list may look different from the last set of indicators that were identified as this will be the area in which we will capture some of the community level work that is currently happening around the shared priority and shared outcomes and I'll talk about that more in just a few minutes. As we discussed uh, at the annual meeting, part of the drawback to, the, to this uh, previous shared plan process was that we asked counties to drill down too far uh, to identify a single strategy or set of strategies that were meant to change a larger scale outcome or priority. And we felt that by drilling down to a single strategy, we inadvertently lost all the associated community work that was going into addressing that identified outcome or priority. We hope that with this new process, we can refocus on the work that is currently happening and reformat it in a way to capture the work as a a collective instead of disparate parts and, and pieces that is happening now in some communities. The major change that we have in the model is where we're going to be introducing mutually reinforcing activities and this is the final component of the plan. As, as we just talked about, we, we asked counties to drill down to identify a single strategy and track that strategy in the hopes that if that strategy was implemented well, you could see an impact on the identified outcome and the larger priority. In this version, we will be asking counties to identify mutually reinforcing activities. These MRAs must be differentiated while still being coordinated through a mutually reinforcing plan of action. The MRAs hopefully will become clear once the work of the different organizations can be mapped out against the same set of indicators and outcomes that will be identified in the process. The idea is looking at what each organization is or could be doing around the priority or outcome within their current structure and identifying how that work can be filtered up to the community level to realize a true community impact to the identified priority or outcome. While the MRAs in this model are taking the place of the shared strategies, we still want to provide each county with the opportunity to develop a new or additional response action on behalf of family and children first. We don't want to limit that possibility, but we feel that it's equally important to identify all the activities occurring in the community that are addressing the priorities. So you will, um, there, there's no prohibition of developing uh, something new through your council, but we also want you to make sure that you're, you're doing to work to identify what's currently happening. The templates uh, that you are used to seeing is the same. Uh, we made some language modifications around shared measurements and mutually reinforcing activities. 
but the template in which you uh, provide your share plan uh, will remain the same. Included in the guidance, which we will send out uh, later on this afternoon, we provided you with a few examples, just like we did uh, in, in previous uh, versions of, of this process. And I wanted to kind of take a few minutes to walk you through what we have in mind, because it, it, it sounds at times confusing in the language, but what we attempted to do was put something on paper, but we also wanted to walk you through this so you can kind of get a feeling about how we want you to approach this moving forward. So as I said, the, the format of the process is, is still the same. You have shared priorities, shared outcomes, then the new shared measurements and mutually reinforcing activities. So you see at the top of the box, we'll be asking you to, again, to identify what your initiatives are within Family and Children First, and there are some examples there. Uh, looking at shared priorities, uh, again, that is similar to what had been done in the past, but we're asking you this time, um, we're not providing you with a prescriptive approach. We're just providing you with examples of how you could do this process, but again, we will let you to uh, be flexible as you can locally to develop what your share priorities are going to be. So looking here at this example, example one, uh, there were many priorities around school success in the previous versions of the plans. So looking at your share outcome, one of those shared outcomes could be to improve kindergarten readiness. Now what we have done in the past, or what we had you do in the past, is drill down to a specific indicator that's going to be attached to, say, improve kindergarten readiness. What we want you to do now is to look at what shared measurement could be. So looking at all of the factors that are going into trying to make sure that youth are, in, are ready for kindergarten. So that's looking at your Help Me Grow transition data, your preschool data, your pre-K registrations, your KRA scores, and how that develops back into making sure that the kids are, are ready to go for kindergarten readiness. So we're not asking you to look at one indicator to, a, to um, impact uh, kindergarten readiness. What we want you to do is look at what is currently happening in your community and the data that's currently being collected around that area. And that could be the same for improving access to services and also looking at the example three, strengthen and improve your family, uh, children first functioning. So then the big ticket item at the end is mutually reinforcing activities, and this is where we'll be asking you to think a little bit differently than what you have in the past. So uh, finishing up our, our, our school success um, example, we're, looking, we're asking you to identify what is currently happening around improving kindergarten readiness. So your successful Help Me Grow Child Find efforts, your successful transitions from Part C to Part B. Um, if you still have one, what your Early Childhood uh, Collaborative Committee is working on and, and what that plan looks like. Uh, your early Head Start uh, uh, numbers and what those transitions look like. Your step up to quality for your, your local uh, child caring agencies. So trying to identify where your system partners are with the work that is currently happening around that outcome and priority and trying to make sure that you can filter that up to achieve that community level. As we said, a lot of this work is already being done around these priorities. What we failed to do in this previous incarnation of the SHARE plan is to capture that work and to make sure that work is ongoing and is known to your community. And as I said here, we will also be able uh, to develop something new. If there's a new strategy that you want to implement, if there's a new program that you want to implement, or if there's other changes within the programming that you currently have, you have the opportunity to do so. But we also, as I said, want you to make sure that you're looking critically at the work that is already happening at the local level. And the, the share plan annual reports uh, will look the, the same as well. Again, we, we, we changed the, the information, the shared measurement indicators. And again, you can copy and, and, and paste this um, report as many times as you need to uh, to highlight what your indicators are and the data that you're going to be tracking. So identifying some, some next steps for uh, family and children uh, first counsel. Um, over the last number of weeks, I have been in conversations with leadership of the Coordinators Association discussing what resources and training that will be available from us here at Ohio Family and Children First to roll out this new guidance. 
Uh, we have made the commitment to dedicating the majority of our first three regional meetings of 2016 to allow counties the opportunities to work more in depth with the model in a group setting and hopefully get answers to all the questions about the process and the end result which will be due on July 31st of 2016. During the previous rollout of the share plan guidance, the state already had a working relationship with um, Ohio State and CLEX, uh, what was known at the time, on additional uh, initiatives uh, that were ongoing. And the development training and TA of the share plan model were rolled into that work. Unfortunately, uh, this is not the case at this time. However, I have been in discussions with leadership of the association on what association-supported training and technical assistance might look like if the opportunity arises. Uh, we are currently having joint discussions with OSU and SEAT about, again, taking up the mantle of providing training and technical assistance around this new model, and those discussions seem promising. Uh, these discussions uh, will be ongoing, uh, but OSU has always been a great partner of ours. And they have uh, worked uh, with Joyce and I as we developed uh, the guidance in this new plan. And they've offered some suggestions to councils on some of the things that they could be doing uh, between now and the regional meetings and the subsequent me regional meetings for planning. And I, I want to take them uh, take a few minutes to provide them an opportunity to present any words of wisdom for councils moving forward. I know that we have uh, at least uh, Melissa Ross on the line. I think she may be uh, joined by Dave Julian and, and Beth Crawford. So, uh, Melissa, if you are available and on the line, I'd like to turn it over to you for a few minutes to talk about what potential next steps would be for councils moving forward. Okay. Hi. Thank you, Chad. This is Melissa Ross. Dave Julian is also here in the room with me. Uh, for those that ha we haven't had the opportunity to meet and to work with, I just wanted to reiterate, as Chad said, that we've got at this point, about 12 years of experience working with councils over um, their shared planning commitments and really working to support their efforts to operationalize the planning requirements that have come down through the state over the years. Uh, we've really worked to refine the tools that we have created in the past and really um, customize them based on the lessons learned with our work with previous councils and have worked to streamline them such that they will be feasible to implement between the January and, and July timeline that you all have for this, for this phase of the work. And so as Chad said, we're partnering with your Health Family and Children First and the association to work to support you through the regional planning meetings. And so it's our suggestion that your first step might be to take the information that you're gaining today and present that to your councils and really begin to kind of kick off in a formal way this next round of planning if you haven't already done so. As Chaz said, we are in the process now of developing a, a customized version for this seventh month process of tools and procedures that will be rolled out through the regional meeting process. We'll also be providing um, some coaching services to folks primarily through the phone and, and email so that we can support your ongoing efforts to try and apply either the tools and procedures that we present or if you decide to go another route and just need a sounding board or additional support, we can be there um, remotely to support you in that way as well. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dave who's just going to do a quick summary of, of how we're thinking about the tools and procedures. Thanks, Melissa. Um, again, I, I, I just want to reiterate or um, uh, support uh, what, what Melissa said, and, and probably the easiest way to do that is to contrast uh, where we've been historically with, with where we think we can be as we move into the, um, the new shared planning process. I mean, for those folks who've been involved in comprehensive community planning, I think there's a common understanding of the complexity and time and resources that that, that requires. And, and just as an illustration, um, um, when we started this process, we, we had a long um, series of steps that required many months to implement and uh, a number of different tools that supported that process and so forth. In this new iteration, we really believe that we can condense that process um, into a um, 
into a few meetings and and perhaps with a half a dozen tools or so. So, I mean, the sacrifice we're making is um, um, reducing some of the complexity and 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 limiting our focus. On the other hand, what we really gain is the opportunity to do this at a much lower investment of resources in um, uh, uh, time and, and and so forth. So as we roll into January, we'll be prepared to unveil uh, what this looks like. And again, the idea is to sort of create the step-by-step uh, -step process supported with with um, um, very st uh, structured tools that uh, will allow you to move this process move through this process in a um, pretty efficient way. So. Uh, Again, looking forward to uh, working with folks, and um, uh, we're we're uh, putting the pieces together as we speak. Okay, thank you uh, to to both of you and, and your your staff for for helping one to 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 kind of revamp uh, what this share plan model is going to look like, and and trying to work out some arrangements uh, with us here in the association for it. Uh, ongoing support, so I appreciate your efforts in that. So uh, we will hopefully be uh, looking forward to working with you and Melissa Moore as we move in this process. Uh, the final thing that I want to uh, discuss today before we turn it over to uh, to questions is um, our 2016 uh, regional meetings. Um, as I said, we're going to provide the, the majority of our regional meetings in January, March, and May. Uh, to look at this and to provide you with ongoing support and effort. Um, we will be extending all January regional meetings. Uh, they'll be scheduled for 9.30 to 12.30 uh, to provide ample time for rollouts. And we're doing this for, for one reason, um, is that as um, previously committed, uh, we will be conducting the engaged learning communities after the regional meeting uh, in each of the regional meetings in January at 1 o'clock. Uh, so we want us to keep with that commitment. So to provide ample time to, uh, to review the rollout, uh, to answer any additional questions, and then to start the training, we wanted to make sure that we gave um, everyone enough time to be able to do that. So we're going to be extending each of the January re regional meetings from 9.30 to 12.30. Uh, they will then provide an opportunity for those that are coming back from the engaged learning community in the afternoon to go get some lunch and, and have an opportunity just to take a break. So uh, I will be sending out uh, notices as we get closer to the regional meetings with the agenda and so on and so forth, but plan for a 9.30 to 12.30 regional meeting in January. So that is all that I have uh, as far as uh, uh, prepared material. So I want to take it over or turn it over to try to answer any questions that any of you have at this point. So uh, please uh, make sure that your, your line is unmuted and we'll take the questions one by one. So Dave, I, I know that you had one there in Lucas County. Chad, I think you kind of answered that. And it was just that, uh, again, rather than adding a new initiative or that to the council, because a lot like for instance, our work in Early Head Start, that cuts across a number of different partners in the community. And so what we would want to do is <clears throat> look at what we're already doing and how do we better integrate with other partners in the community. Yes, that's correct. We, we want to, for, for these um, outcomes <clears throat> and priorities, we want to make sure that, that counties have an opportunity to capture the work that, has already do, uh, that they're already doing and bring that up to a community level to make sure that, that that priority and that outcome is being realized as effectively and efficiently as possible. And I, I just want to comment real quick. I really, really appreciate the kind of approach you've taken on this, too. Thank you. Chad, Nancy Omohan. Yes. Uh, you know, our council meets every other month. Uh, are these tools going to be something that they can do without having to convene um, many, many times? I, I'll turn that over to, to Melissa and Dave, but yeah, I, um, I, I think Melissa and or Dave mentioned that the tools that we, they will be providing will be 
feasible uh, so that counties can have the opportunity to, to work within that, that, that six month time frame that we're providing them. So uh, Melissa, Dave, do you have any other context to that, to that question? Um, I, I, just reinforcing that idea, um, I think it's, um, as, as we begin to look at these tools, we're, we're really trying to pull together a set of activities that, again, can be completed relatively quickly. Um, uh, certainly some of that application can occur, it can occur outside of a, a council meeting. There probably will be a requirement for at least a meeting or two. Um, but again, this is the idea here is not a long, drawn-out process that requires meeting after meeting. This is um, um, uh, generating some information rather quickly, acting on, on that information, identifying um, uh, shared priorities, and, 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 and so forth. So again, we, we think we can meet that requirement uh, to, to do this quickly in a few meetings. Any other questions? Okay. Um, uh, one thing I, I would be remiss in, in not doing or thanking the uh, dozen or so counties, I think we had 12 or 13 counties that reviewed the guidance uh, prior to us finalizing it and, and getting it sent out to you later this afternoon. So uh, those counties know who they are. So thank you very much for that. Um, uh, that feedback, we, did, we took that feedback to heart. We, we made some changes uh, to the guidance, and you will see that uh, later on this afternoon. Uh, so again, for, for your colleagues that are, are emailing and, and texting you, and uh, my apologies, um, I didn't think the limit on this was as small as it was, but we will be conducting a, a, a identical webinar later on this afternoon at 1.30, and after that is, is finished, uh, we will send out the PowerPoint that you saw today, and also the guidance that, that everyone is waiting on. Uh, I will be recording both of these sessions, um, so uh, we will make sure that for those of you who weren't on this morning and can't be on this afternoon can have access to that. Um, so any, any final questions, anything that I can answer before we sign off? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I hope everyone, you and your families, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday, and we will see you at the regional meetings in January. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.